if you are looking for a media server that allows you to create a personalized collection of your content, then you'll want to check out Jellyfin. Jellyfin is cost effective because it is free and open source. It allows you to stream your own media with no ads or restrictions and can be self-hosted on your own hardware. In this video, we'll be setting up Jellyfin to run on your Synology NAS using Container Manager. We'll also enable remote access to your Jellyfin media server to allow you to stream your content from wherever you may be. To get started, make sure you have Container Manager installed on your Synology NAS. Once installed, bring up FileStation and within the Docker folder, create a Jellyfin folder. Then within the Jellyfin folder, create both a cache and config subfolder. Next, bring up Control Panel, select Terminal and SNMP, and enable the SSH service. We'll need to SSH into our Synology NAS to get information to configure the project. Next, we'll want to set up shared folders for the media we'll want to make available to Jellyfin. This can be personalized to your preference, so feel free to customize your setup. If you are just following along, in my setup, I'll create separate shared folders for movies and TV shows. Once the shared folders are created, bring up Container Manager, select Project, and click Create. Here, you'll want to give the project a name. Set the path to the Jellyfin folder that was created within the Docker shared folder. Then select Create Docker Compose.yaml from the Source pull-down menu and paste in the Docker Compose YAML that you'll find in the description of this video. A couple of things you'll want to change are the PUID and GUID, which you can find by SSHing into your Synology NAS with the account you'd like to run Jellyfin under. Then run the ID command, which will provide you the information needed, and change the PID and GID placeholder text in the configuration file. Confirm the volumes listed match what you set up on your Synology NAS. If you are following along with my setup, this likely doesn't need to change. At this point, you can click Next. Next again on the Web Portal Settings window, and then done on this Summary window to download the Jellyfin image and start the project. And while the project is being built, consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Once the project is successfully built and up and running, you can bring up another browser tab and connect to Jellyfin by entering in the IP address of your Synology NAS along with port 8096. If all goes well, you'll come to this Welcome to Jellyfin window where you can select your preferred display language. Then you'll need to set up a Jellyfin admin account from this window. Next, you'll want to set up your media libraries by clicking Add Media Library. If you set up the same shared folders that I did, you can select Movies for Content Type and set the folder to the slash Movies folder from within the container and click OK. You can then repeat the same process for the TV shared folder where Content Type should be set to Shows and Folder should be set to the slash TV folder. I'm also going to change the display name to TV in my setup. Now you can click Next through the remaining few windows and click Finish to complete the setup, which brings you to the Jellyfin login screen. Here you can log in with the admin username and password you just set up. At this point, you can upload your media to the Movies and TV shared folders using FileStation. When the media is finished uploading, bring up Jellyfin once again and in my case, I see the media that I just uploaded. The next thing we'll do is enable remote access to Jellyfin to allow you to stream your media from outside of your local network. To do this, you'll want to set up a DDNS hostname using Synology as the DDNS provider. Set up a Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate from the security control panel then create a reverse proxy that takes advantage of the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate. 
Here you can see that I'm adding Jellyfin to the beginning of the DDNS hostname that was created earlier. Then assign the Jellyfin subdomain to the Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate. For further details on this setup, check out my video on subdomains and wildcard certificates, which goes through these steps in more detail. The last step to allow remote access is to set up port forwarding on your router to forward port 443 to your Synology NAS. Once all of this is in place, you should be able to access Jellyfin using the subdomain that you just created from wherever you may be. Another option to access Jellyfin remotely is by using a VPN. In that case, you can skip setting up a DDNS hostname, Let's Encrypt wildcard certificate, and reverse proxy, and set up a VPN using one of the methods listed in the VPN playlist here on screen. And if you would like to support my work or hire me for a project you are working on, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.